Welcome to Child's Play with Sam Kim, and today we're joined by the world-renowned rapper, Michael Dot. He debuted as a member of the duo All Black in 2006 and appeared on shows like Show Me The Money, Tribe of Hip Hop, and The Fisherman in the City. And he's re recently made a three-song comeback album called Prayer. And that was just released at the end of September, and you can find him on his IG at Michael.Official2. Welcome, man. Welcome. Uh, Michael, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for the <laughs> welcome. By the way, the um, the official Michael Dot uh, Instagram has been hacked, but hopefully, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, I'll be able to get that back. Right, I feel like you have a lot more uh, followers on that one, right? Yeah, it, it's not about the. F oh yeah, it is kind of about the followers, but it's just <laughs> like it, it's my whole journey, you know. Right, it's, your whole content, your journey from I, the I beginning, that, and it's it's not. Yeah, it's not like it's my platform, but it's like those people have been with me through the journey. So. All right, all right, all right. No, I feel you on that. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get started then, yeah? Thank you for inviting me, by the way. It's no, of course, yo. Yo, Charles Play is going to be the biggest <laughs> thing in the future. We shall see, right? Fingers and crossed. Not, it, will be, it will be. Yeah, all right. So, I already hear you have an accent, right? So, where were you born and where'd you oh, grow yeah. up? Um, so I moved to New Zealand from Korea when I was four. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we immigrated there, grew up in a, it's a small town, but it's the biggest town in um, New Zealand. Not till, not till too long ago, it was the capital, Auckland City. Okay. Auckland, not the California Auckland, but mm. A-U-C-K-L-A-N-D, Auckland. Um, grew up in East Auckland, actually. Uh, English is my first language. Uh, went to kindergarten, elementary school, mm -hmm. middle school, high school, and university, college. All, all over in, there? Yep, all in New Zealand. Grew up Interesting. there. Interesting. So how was it, I guess, your transition when you went back to Korea? Um, well, it is, the culture is different, you know? The culture, right. You, you, growing up in New Zealand, it was like... It was enjoyable. It was happiness. Um, it was ve it's very pure. Not saying that Korea is in happiness or is impure, but New Zealand is very um, just the purity, like as in like the nature or mm. the people or the city is is slow. Like ten nine p.m. everything was shut down. Korea oh. nine p.m. seventy percent of the places is it's uh -huh. just getting started. You know, right. not, not right. the nightlife, but just everything, everything. Yeah. So Life in it's general. a total. It's total change in um, the main change would be the momentum and tempo of the lifestyles. You know, New Zealand is a, li a little bit more laid back. 5 yeah. p.m. straight cut, finish work, but then you go home, relax and have a beer or two. But in Korea, it's like 24 hours is not enough for a day. <laughs> no, of course. Really. It, it is, it's just it's the start like if you if you're living by well that's how i felt if if you have if you're living by 24 hour clock you're gonna fall behind right <clears throat> so that's, that, that's kind of like the uh, main difference and everyone around you in korea is, is just working hard every day every day mm -hmm. not, not not to just get by tomorrow or by today but for tomorrow and to do better than yesterday you know what i mean is yeah. there's no there's not much of a fixed time frame e everything's changing momentarily it's so busy um uh, the rush hour traffic's pretty much all day all night you know all right now i feel like especially uh you know as a korean we definitely work not just for our family but for our future families you know what i mean future yeah, generations. Yeah, you know, we, we try to build them. that um foundation right right um, right we try to build that foundation and i mean the culture is different too as in uh mm -hmm. You know, older people, you, you, it's, it's, there's, there's hierarchies, you know, mm -hmm. hierarchies. And whereas in New Zealand, every, everyone's friendly, everyone's friends. Like I used to call my friends' parents by their names, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so, like America, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah. America. Like, hey, right. Andy, but this guy's like 30 years older than you. Can, you don't do that in Korea, you know what yeah, I mean? Of course not. Of course not. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I understand. That's for sure. So let's but both you know, level of respect the same though, but it, no, of course, it, of course, just different culture, it different, right, right, yeah. right, just different wording is all. Yeah, definitely. but the respect is there, of course. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So how did you, I guess, decide that rapping was the career for you? 
Um, well, rapping, I don't know, is cliche. I wouldn't say rapping chose me, but uh, <laughs> my my brother is also a famous uh, a famous uh, musician. He's okay. a artist. He's a he's originally a rapper. He raps too, but he's well known for his ballad singing. Hmm. Um, oh, he's a singer. Yeah, and I have an oh. older brother too. But so they used to rap when I was young, maybe when I was eight or something, and then I used to just. You know, copy them I used to just try freestyle read rhymes off nursery rhymes as a rap but then they were making an album <clears throat> and then they wanted me to do a song in it mm -hmm. so back then I couldn't write anything so Sanchez wrote me a verse and then I rapped it it was on track 16 of that album and then it just happened from there I guess dynamic duo came to Korea and it's just things got crazy mm. I mean, I would definitely say you have the voice for sure when you rap. Oh, yeah. You know well, what I mean? So when I don't rap, I don't have the voice. Nah, <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's not what I'm saying. But, you know, you definitely have that accent. It helps, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, <laughs> so how'd you come with the name and the concept of Microdot? Um, the name and concept of Microdot, the first uh, official recording session that I did when I was, mm -hmm. I think, about eight, um, it's... It's pretty childish, but the brand of the scooter, the kickboard scooter, you know, the scooters that you ride around. Right, the right. Engine, the brand of it was called Micro, and the engine, studio engineer had a uh, quite a big fancy mole on his face. So I just stuck Dot and Micro together, and it just came together. That's how it came about. Like a small Dot, and I was, and I was the small chubby kid, so it kind of made sense. And that's uh. how it created it's self and the rest is history i guess oh, interesting okay oh, I, I had no idea <laughs> That's yeah hilarious. yeah a lot of people don't know that yeah. i've said this a hundred times but then you know people stood on they ask me and then they're like oh wow and then oh wow it's not right, that much actually oh wow <laughs> so i guess what's like the process in becoming a rapper um, I think uh, the process of coming becoming a rapper is yeah. I I I wouldn't say like I I can't say I'm the best rapper or the most well known rapper or anything mm. like that. Like, but humbly stating, um, the process of becoming a rapper kind of comes it's it's fifty fifty. It's, it it can come natural, like you you have a beat and rhythm and you 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 can flow to a certain tempo of beat or you can practice, you know, mm. when you start, you can start um, covering rap songs, you know, getting the gist, cover a lot of different artists, different styles, and then you you pick up a, a, at a certain point of some style or genre, your voice will suit it, that flow and tempo will suit you, like there's trap artists, there's uh, boom bap artists, there's, you know, there's melodical mm. artists, um, they, like those are the, uh, I think, kind of some of the ingredients that you need to become a rapper these days, I guess. Right. So those things, may, maybe it could be something like lyrical, you know, uh, something like an artistic uh, advantage that you could have, like your mind could think different to a lot of the people around you. The way you see things is different. You mm -hmm. know, some people see the red light as red light, but some other person could see it as orange. Right. Or these little things that make you not just a rapper, but an artist, I think. And I feel like it's not just about passion and wanting to succeed, but it's how deep your heart is and how deep your mind is in certain situations or the way you think about something or portray someone or something like that, portray yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And we, we say that in Korean, we kind of describe that as color. Yeah. what kind of color color you have inside your heart and mind i guess mm. that kind of got too deep but yeah no that was a very <laughs> deep answer but i mean i completely understand that that makes yeah. sense okay so you know i guess pivoting from that right what's your mindset and like thought process when you start writing lyrics and like you hear it be and you're like this is it um uh, well uh naturally for me it's like if i hear a beat or I hear someone's life story or simply, for example, like a breakup or if I go through a breakup or something, it comes from experience, my own experience. 
Um, step one would be that if it's if it's a slow jam, maybe a love song, maybe a relationship or something like that. Mm. But for me, if I if I just hear a beat and then I start I start mumbling, try to uh, pick up the chorus line a bit. These days, that's how I kind of start the song off with. I start off with the main chorus. Sometimes I wouldn't put a chorus in, but you know, pe people like listening to choruses. I like singing choruses, but I think somewhere in my memory, I'll pick up a certain timeline and then I'll start mumbling about it. I'll start writing about it. That'll suit the beat, you know, the mood of the beat. And then the second part would be writing my experience and during that process i'd have to write it in a third person's point of view right so it's, it's not just my story the person listening has to understand and resonate be able to relate and i like right. putting subliminal messages in it too so when people mm -hmm. listen to my songs the first time and second time third time it could mean a different thing depending on their situation but it's the same words that's kind of how i like to uh that that's kind of like my lyric writing process and choosing a beat okay i wouldn't write first and then yo let's make a beat right, it, it, right. i'll ask my producer um I, i'm kind of you know today i'm feeling kind of bright like maybe like a house but hip-hop pop type of beat mm -hmm. i'm feeling good you know i'm going outside running and then tell him like a concept he'll make it and then i'll match it and then i'll, I'll tweak it i'll keep tweaking it in my mind Got it. Okay. So it's like iterations, right? Yeah. 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 So if it's like, I'm going on a run, I like, I'd like a hundred BPM tempo, which mm -hmm. would be like a fast walking pace. So people kind of bump to it, you know, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like a club vibe. I'll put it down into trap BPM 68. Mm -hmm. I'll rap, pause. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Okay. So I get my next question would be like, from being a solo artist compared to, you know, your history and being a duo, right? Which mm -hmm. do you, I guess, prefer and why? Because obviously it's like totally different experiences, right? Yeah, I mean, being in a group definitely is not easy. I respect everybody, every mm -hmm. person in a group because the, the decision-making process would have to, you know, split into five or four or three. And that's difficult because you're from different families, uh, whatever the case is no one's one-minded you're right. separate people you got separate experiences and upbringings and especially when it comes to what you want to do you know so mm. that, that can cause um conflict and that could be difficult but a two-person group may be a little uh less conflict or maybe more depending on uh, the situation but i used to be an old black but i was so young so that it was time. really like you was making the decision at that point. Yeah, yeah, I was making yeah. decision. If I did make a decision, it would be like, I'll make a decision for myself and it ends there. It won't really, you know, mm. proceed to the final product kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But as a solo artist, um, it takes a lot of responsibility because you got to be able to balance what you want to do and what you should do and what others want you to do, as in like the world, the listeners. Mm. So it's not always about I want to talk about this, but people may not want to hear it. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. You you know that you shouldn't talk about this, but you want to. It's like that constant thought process and when I should release this, how I should release this. It, it, it's kind of like a the opposite of a group. Maybe a group would kind of come together and bring all the colors in and it will come to a good result. But whereas mm. myself, I got to figure that out. You know, it's it's a game. It's like you don't want to make the wrong move, kind of, of thing. Course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your brand is you, you wake up. The yeah. same you need a lot of experience, mm. kind of, in this game or that game, whatever industry you're in. Right. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Mm. So, from prior to your last album, right? Prior to Prayer was um, Profit back in 2017. Yep, yep, yep. So why was there like a three year gap in that? So there, there was, so after Profit actually, hmm. huh, Sam didn't do his research. Homework. Did I not? I, I did release a, a mini album and a few oh. more. So I released a mini album called um, Light. And then I released a single called uh, Thinking About You with Chancellor and Giselle. 
which is pretty cool. A summer jam, and then it was like a two-year gap. Mm -hmm. So th there was a bit of trouble in this situation that I'm, not, I'm just going to briefly touch on because it's very sensitive. So it's to do with my parents. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that kind of escalated really quickly. Um, I didn't know about the situation at all. Um, I explained this actually on my uh, YouTube channel too about what actually happened. I, I didn't open my mouth for two years. I didn't really go outside. I was in a really bad place for a long time, really. I was very, <clears throat> um, I'm quite shy to talk about it. I'm quite uh, disappointed in myself that I did go to that point, but I, I, I felt like I had no option. I was very dark, um, things like that. But yeah, it, it was to do with my parents' problem that I tried to help as their son. Mm. So, um, take care of this situation, but I failed to do so because I just didn't have enough. I didn't have enough understanding. I didn't have enough, uh, for example, uh, it's hard to describe. I just, <clears throat> yeah, it was, it, was, it was a very complicated situation that I can't really say in one statement, but yeah, it, it, it was just a really hard time. And um, I kind of stopped all my, what do you call it? All my activity as a celebrity and a musician artist. So everything was put on hold for approximately almost two years and then um, took a big leap of faith and released prayer, mm. which was September 25th, yeah, 2020. Yeah, not too long ago, a couple of days ago, actually. Right. After a lot, of, uh, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of growing up right little my english name's david mm -hmm. <laughs> so little little david became big david grown up david um yeah so there, there was a lot of a lot of time for me one day felt like a month for another person you know yeah it's just repetitive repetitive constant thinking constant just shut from the world i, I just shut myself out from the world <clears throat> and then kind of slowly started um, trying to uh, come back out, which was very difficult. Right. So, well, well, this interview is like the first interview I've done in a very long time and could become the final interview for a very long time. But yeah, I, I just felt like, you know, you're my brother. And also, right. um, yeah, it, it's a good opportunity for me to feel kind of bright at least a little bit you know right feel normal again right and yeah, yeah yeah so that, yeah, the, yeah that, that yeah. was the reason for the for the gap and yeah i i i'm i'm grateful that i was even able to release prayer right, right. so going forward i guess what's your plan um well can, can i talk about prayer a little bit yeah go ahead so um Prayer is, is a three track mini album. Mm. Um, main track is Responsibilities. That's the title. That's talking about um, my mind, thought, process, and what I went through. It's like a little glimpse. I, I couldn't fit all of that into one song. Mm. So uh, Responsibilities, I actually wrote over 3000 bars for that song and ended up only released uh, recording about maybe hundred and something or so bars. Oh, so it was wow. difficult. It was difficult finding that balance <clears throat> between my thought and the other side's thought and the world's thought. It, it was such a difficult song to process in my head, and that was the biggest challenge of my life as an artist and musician. Um, but I felt like I was able to get as close as I can to that balanced state and I recorded it, released it. And it's a sincere song, um, sending my deepest sincere apologies um, to the people that got hurt mm. and the world too. Um, and explaining that it, it, a lot of the, the false accusations that was made by the media too, um, which was also um, brought up on my YouTube video recently that I released, I did an interview. Um, yeah, anyway, that, that's responsibilities. It's it's about growing up and realizing that um, you just got to take responsibility, even though it's not your fault. 
Mm -hmm. um, sometimes life really, you know, hits you unexpectedly. But but you got to realize, um, you got to accept it, and accepting that becomes a big big weight that you have to carry on your shoulders for the rest of your life, especially right. in this era because it became such a big issue. Mm. Uh, and that that's the whole concept of the responsibility that I got to carry on for the rest of my life. Uh, and that, that's kind of how that planned out. Um, young I um, is, is a story about my upbringing. Mm. Um, about, I just couldn't give up. I almost did give up within the two years. I, I, I was in a very dark place, but I didn't give up somehow but um yeah that that song is very deep too it's about my upbringing and also that song is i i perceive myself as a third person's view so the person listening whoever struggled whoever's going through a very hard time that they may feel like today is their last day to mm. this breath is their last breath like just somehow you, only that person can know how they can just hold on to something just one more step you know yeah just, you're one step away, you know, it's not, it's not going to rain for the, for, for another whole eternity is, is there's always going to be sun shine again. You know what I mean? It's kind of that yeah. concept of the song. Mm. Uh, and also alone is a song where, when I felt the most loneliest, um, loneliest time of my life for the first time, I, I understood what loneliness is. I, and I, I kind of could grasp and imagine what, lonely people actually go through what real loneliness is what real depression is mm. um it's like you're standing there but no one sees you right you, you, you're screaming out but no one hears you mm. uh, it's, it's kind of about that concept and recording these three songs i cried a lot to be honest I, like it wasn't tears of like regret or sorrow or sadness but it's tears where i was rapping the song with my voice but I felt like a third person hearing the story. Mm. It's it's truth about it. Um, yeah, it, it was it was very deep. I, I, I'm not sure if that actually um, translated and you know that message got across the person listening. But I could only hope that it does. That it was a very sincere album, um, and it's a it's a, it's the first stepping stone to hopefully what would become in my future the restart process getting back sure. up process right yeah. right Step at a time. i mean just you talking about it honestly gives me goosebumps you know <laughs> like the vibe, well, you know what i mean yeah it's well i'm glad well yeah. i'm glad i'm grateful i know what to say <laughs> <laughs> thanks kind of yeah for sure so like you know we see like artists branching into different genres of music right as mm -hmm. their careers occur. so have you experimented with your unreleased, like with different weird styles? I want to say weird, but different creative well, styles. Yeah, like um, I have so many songs recorded, mixed. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah I, I have over maybe 30 songs, maybe about 17 songs that are title track quality, you know? so many genres i got boom bap i got acoustic i got me singing on it like through this these two years i've grown so much in the aspect of an artist that i never knew i had the potential to actually write lyrics like this in korean and in english that i could actually deliver my message in this kind of way it, it was it was a lot of writing and ripping the page out, writing, ripping the page out, deleting song files, but it, it made, I hope it made me stronger, but it made me as an, it made the artistic musician point of micro dot very strong. Mm. Um, every, every statement I make, even if it's a bright song, a house type track, everything I say has a depth in it that I feel like, that I feel that it has a message in every, you know, even even the kind of like a drifty, just driving by kind of vibe songs, you know. So hopefully um, I'll, I'll get the opportunity to release it one day and let people listen to it. But um, yeah, I, I've found, yeah, 
I, I'm singing in a lot, a lot of songs. Mm. Okay. Rapping, flowing, melodical rapping, just listen, easy listening songs, mellow, maybe jazzy vibe. I, I got a lot. A yeah, lot I can see the happiness in your eyes talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh-huh. It's just, I guess I found the true enjoyment of my life, truthfully, right. through experience. Uh, this was my good. only outlet. <clears throat> so outside of rapping, you know, I know you're into fishing soccer yeah. and fitness yeah. right yeah. i know you're into fitness that's one thing for sure so like yeah right so can you share i guess how those three things has influenced your work-life balance well um soccer as new zealanders and english people call the football uh, mm. soccer is kind of like a get getaway but now like i, I was a semi-professional professional player when i was younger so mm. contracted player um Playing soccer now isn't that competitive, but it kind of brings me back to a taste of New Zealand, but not the country or the culture, but my childhood days where I was young, wild and free, kind of. Mm. You know, I, 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 I wouldn't get a call. For, my parents were always working. So if I went out with a soccer ball, I, I wouldn't think of homework. I wouldn't think of, I have to get my ass home kind of thing. You know, right, I was right, just right. free. That's what I kind of feel when I play soccer. Everything just gets out of my mind. And it's just a ball, a bunch of good friends. We just kick in. It's, it's simple. Mm. The simplicity and the happiness in it is very fun. And the love for the sport is very deep, you know? Right. Shout out to Sonny because he's playing really good in Tottenham. But anyway, well, fishing. Fishing is, is crazy for me. Um, growing up, you know, uh, the, I this is the truth, but um, I, I started fishing when I was seven or eight. Like we, we, I'm not trying to pick a point or trying to appeal myself that to do with my parents' situation here. It's not um, from my memory, pure, purely, purely and clearly. Um, we used to go fishing. It wasn't survival fishing, that, that's a bit cliche, but we, we couldn't afford food, right? So we would go to churches nearby, eat, as soon as I started making friends, I would sleep over at their house to eat nice meals, kind of. That's how I grew up. But as I said, in New Zealand, like even soccer and memories, I was happy within that. I was grateful, I was thankful. Um, but fishing was was the outlet that's now have now become my music. If I go fishing, you know, if I'm angry, if I see my parents fight or, Whatever the case is, if I go fishing, if I yell at the water, it's not going to yell back. Right. All you see is the the waves. If I go at night, you see the moonlight. You know, it's it's just peace. It's like meditation. Right. It's like yoga therapy, meditation kind of thing. It's mm. it's a mate. It's beautiful. And right. like when I go fishing by myself or just time to time, I, I don't actually keep the fish either. Mm. I, I catch the fish, and then when I go personally, not on when I used to go on the TV show, but Personally, I'll catch the fish and they give it a kiss, take a photo and send it back home. It's just, it gets me away from everything. When you're on top of the water in the middle of the sea, your phone doesn't ring, no Wi-Fi, it, you, you truly separate it. It's not just your mind where you're at home and you turn your phone off. You're actually forced to separate from the world. It's mm-hmm. like being on an airplane kind of thing. Right. Um, it's amazing. It's, it's just peaceful. It's, yeah, it's, it's really good. And fitness is just crazy. Like my, I have to like, my lifestyle has to be active. Mm-hmm. As I said before, even during these 24 hour long days of the two year period, apart from a little time where, where I lost myself a bit and, you know, lost my lifestyle and the quality of it, um, fitness kind of keeps my mind straight. You know, when I have a thousand things on my mind, I go to gym. That's the only time. Like when I'm playing soccer or go, if, I, if, I, if I've gone fishing, I, I can't separate. I can't multitask. But when I go fitness, when I go work out, it's that drive that, you know, you feel the pain, but you got to do more. Right. It's no, for my improvement. It's for me to get stronger. It kind of reflects to life in a way. It's deep. It but some people may, may laugh, but for me, 
that is the amount of dip that it has in my life. Mm. You know what I mean? When when yeah. I struggle, when I when my brain's about to explode, I go to gym. It's not just about bench presses. I actually go through proper routines, resumes. I push through it, and during that, like the whole profit album, seventy percent of it, I would have written while doing um, cardio in the gym. So I'll just cycle for like three hours and just just write, 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 write. You know? Yeah. It just it relieves my brain. It, it relieves the heat kind of thing. It's a getaway. It's a getaway. It's a getaway. It's a getaway that you don't have to go on a plane or drive somewhere far. It's just to the gym or wherever it's self-improvement too at the end of the day right yeah and i and i i actually you know concentrate on i i really it's important to have a healthy lifestyle mm. but the extreme that i go to that i work out crazily is it's not really needed to have a healthy lifestyle but i'm a, i guess i'm obsessed with it okay. yeah so i guess in your rapping career so far, right? What unique skill sets do you think you have that made you get to where you are? Um, to be honest, I, I actually think uh, growing up, it, it's it's tough to say right now, but it is the truth. So I got to say it because I, I don't like lying. Hmm. Do you hear that? Is that me? One second. Yeah, that is me. Hold on. No, you're fine. Take your time. Okay, there we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, truthfully talking, I, I can't lie. Uh, people have their filters. Um, they may not want to listen to them, this, but for me growing up and what I saw growing up would be my parents. Hmm. Uh, in New Zealand, when we immigrated, we were very, very, very poor. Um, from when I was 13 or 14, at the legal working age, I've, I've never had a time when I had less or less than two jobs mm. i always had two or three jobs part-time all the time could never work full-time because I, I had to study too um once again I, i'm saying the term responsibilities but I, I i was never shown or they never taught me with their voice of chosen words what responsibilities is and what it's well, you need to become a grown up, you know, from a young age. I, I grew up just you know, every day, I would see their backside because they would leave the house. When they come home, I, I'll be asleep. Um, that's how I grew up. So, thank God, thank just thankfully that I learned the importance of responsibility at a young age just by their presence. Mm. One second. Why is this going? Oh, here we go. Yeah, so I, I, I'm grateful and thankful for that. And that's, I think, I want to say I've become successful. Well, I have become successful, but that would be the key. And honestly, the biggest key is just as cliche as it may sound, it's, it's really being humble. Hmm. And I think a place like New Zealand, <clears throat> that's one of the best places to learn about being humble. Yeah. Yeah. And when when I was, you know, when I on, on my road to success in Korea at a young age, mm -hmm. I did lose myself for a bit. Um, but I was able to grab that. Um, and when I realized, actually, I was listening to a J. Cole song. I love J. Cole. Um, when he talks about he used to drive a range, but now he bikes, you know? Yeah. Um, things like that and I was driving a range at that time and I sold it right away and I I, I took the subway for about four months if to the gym to the gym at that time I would run um I'll catch the bus yeah it it, it kind of found my roots again and, that, and that's important that you don't it's important like if your roots is success remain in that system don't try and um well, coming from me, don't try and make yourself, like force yourself into another system, you know? Yeah. And if, you're, if your roots are humble and you're from a hard upbringing, don't force yourself to fit into that other side of the system because you're gonna get lost. Right. You, 
right. you don't have a foundation there. You don't have a, a platform to stand on. Right, right. What will happen is, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, you, you're gonna, it's, it's like, it's like blue ocean. There's gonna yeah. be sharks and they, they're gonna rip you apart because that's what they used to. And mm. if they come to you, it's not gonna work. But if, if you, once again, accept a lot of different point of views and a lot, a lot of different people in life, then you start understanding that it is a big circle and everyone is in it. But yeah, just don't force yourself to learn too fast. No, it should naturally happen. Yeah, if you got to learn 10 things, don't, if this isn't like that road to success thing, make a 10 year plan and try to finish it within six months. And if you fail, it's all right because you did better than someone that didn't try. It's not like that. This no. is like a learning thing. You got to make sure you take step by step by step. So when you fall, you only fall one step, not the whole 10 steps. You know what I mean? Right. Don't, don't skip that. Yeah. Just patience, patience. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. I, I kind of feel like a lecturer or a teacher or something right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I definitely, I definitely vibe with what you're saying, especially around the responsibilities, you know? Is yeah, coming from yeah. New York and stuff, and like yeah. I grew up humbly, you know what I mean. So I understand completely where you're coming from. And I do know your upbringing too, so okay. I know you would understand. Right, right, right. So for sure, we smile and all that one. <laughs> so what's one thing you wish you had like known when you first started your career? <sighs> besides this whole parents issue thing that I had no idea about, besides that. Um, I think if I if I was to tell myself my 10 year ago self, I wish to go through the same thing. Yeah. Not many people can say that I don't think truthfully, but what I've been through isn't the brightest of days, not just the two years, but Having the capability and understanding and acceptance of, for example, other cultures or different systems and stuff like that. I think I was lucky that I was able to adapt and learn and then step forward. And if I didn't go through those things, um, I don't know who I would be right now or what right. I would be doing. Maybe if I was to give myself a tip, you know, just keep patient. It's difficult though, because patience and then leaping for that opportunity is a very thin line. You know, mm -hmm. it's always reachable, but you don't know if it's that right one. So yeah, I, I think patience, having knowledge and patience. You know, I, I graduated um, college. I'm very thankful for that. I worked my ass off of that because I was working three jobs to just pay off those bills. But still, education is key. Education is in everything. Life lessons is what I'm coming from now. Life lessons, mm -hmm. patience and understanding. That's, you know, speak less, listen more. Um, listen more to, listen, learn how to, um, in Korean, there's a saying, lean over and listen to the important things. It mm. means really open your ears, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, don't don't think you're always right. I don't think don't be a know-it-all. <laughs> yeah. All right. You gotta accept feedback sometimes, right? Yeah, like if you only need to know five words to make a sentence, knowing six isn't gonna kill you. Yeah. Right. It's gonna give you an option to change that one word would actually will actually give you the capability of making five sentences mm. when you were originally only able to make one you know what i mean yeah i feel you yo shout out to jay giving me hey. feedback my boy uh <laughs> right so who's uh i guess the you know since we're here now like what who you want to give shout outs to as in terms of resources that helped you along the way um with shout outs, man, like during the hardest time of my life would be my best friends that I grew up with in New Zealand because mm. they know who they are, so I'm not going to name them. Right. 
they would message me every day, every day throughout the two years, just to make sure I wouldn't die, like literally, because they could only imagine what I was going through. But I'm not the type of person to express myself in that way. Mm. I don't, I don't express my true happiness in words. Mm. It just comes in my smile or my laughter or something like that. But same thing goes for sadness, right. and I wouldn't be able to show them my tears either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there were. I have good, good friends in Korea that. I couldn't leave my house. I was scared to leave my house for like like five months. They would bring me groceries time to time from long ways and grateful for that. And there are people, they know who they are that really, really, really helped me stay afloat. You know what I mean? Mm. And and my producers, my, my, my family, my brothers, it's just everybody really. I'm just... The biggest shout out goes to life for giving me the biggest and toughest and hardest lesson that anyone could learn at the age of 26 that a lot of people in this world wouldn't have to go through in their life. Right. Uh, and with that came with my best friends, uh, my good friends in Korea, mm -hmm. my family coming together, uh, everything, everything. W wish I didn't happen. Wish all that didn't happen. Um, wish I could have done more. But at the end of the day, that's yeah, to life. Right, right. But and at least you got to figure life. out like who was in it for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm still figuring it out because right. you know when when this happened, a lot of people left my side and my personality. I wouldn't accept that. I wouldn't believe that. Right. But even now, I, I don't. I don't hate them or anything. I wish the best for them. If they need a helping hand, I, I wouldn't hesitate, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, I think that's just me, but or maybe it's them too, but it wasn't at that time. But still, still, I, I, I wouldn't hesitate to give them right. help. And, I think uh, what you just said speaks volumes though, of your character, you know? I hope so. I hope it's not down volume though. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yeah. I understand, for sure. So, you know, I guess just to bring some happiness into this. Yeah, What's yeah, the yeah. proudest moment so far for you? In my life? Yeah. Being alive. <laughs> Not that was too <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> um, that, that is one, but I'd say literally this is this entire story of my life is mm. being a big roller coaster, but I've reached heights that I don't think would be really possible. And a, a lot of people would say that a lot of people would have gone through that process, but just a different lane, you know? But yeah. I'm grateful that I had uh, my lane <clears throat> with that. And the greatest achievement would be as a musician, mm. being able to write and get messages from people that I've never seen in my life that this song helped them live through another day even to little things like this chips, this this made me smile. Mm. You know, as a musician, that's crazy. Like, that's power. Mm. That's power not being abused. That's purity, you know? Right. Um, and it's most natural form. Definitely. Yeah. And it wasn't my intention, but they made that my intention. They did, the listeners did, you know? Mm. And I, that's, that's pure art and not saying that I'm pure art, but that process is pure art and it's amazing. <laughs> mm. It's, it, it's a, it's a beautiful struggle, I guess. It is, but it yeah, is. Um, that would be my greatest achievement besides yeah. being, all, being on the, the City Fisherman and all the TV shows and all uh -huh. the amazing big and small stages and you know, e even though when that became my job, day to day job, I would wake up every day, even when I was busy, I would pray every morning, like, and this is truth, this is facts, I would pray every morning, just thank you. Mm. And you have those days when you're busy, you know, when you're busy. Right. And you don't have that time, well, you do have that time, but you just 
you just gotta go out for some reason. You, your right. mind gets desperate, your heart gets desperate. But I would always close my eyes. First thing I would do is say, thank you. And then amen, and every day. Hmm. And I still said that um, during those two years, hmm. but I also did add help me too <laughs> during those right, two years. Right, right, right. I felt like I should have said that beforehand too. Hmm. But that's also a part of growing up you know but yeah that those everything's a, everything every moment in my life i think is a proud moment it's crazy because it just is i mean i would say like we're living this life for the first time right yeah so we're bound to make mistakes you know Definitely. It's our first time living it and i think if you don't make a mistake it isn't something wrong, but maybe, maybe you should just go a little out of your comfort zone. All right, just a little bit. Just, uh. yeah. <laughs> so we have a vision here, right? With Child's Play with Sam Kim. To okay. dream your wildest dreams, right? So if you could just, I guess, imagine 10 years from now, what, where are you at? What you doing? My vision is very, very simple. Hmm. And you might be like, ah. Oh, but a lot of people might be like, ah, oh, but from 10 years from now, yeah. I truly hope that I have my own family. Huh. It's healthy and I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy enough to keep them healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, successful or less successful or not successful. As I said, I, I hope to be wealthy enough to take care of them, you know, with no stress, with no problems that I had growing up that I couldn't go to the dental clinic or whatever because we just couldn't for some reason. At a young age, that's all I knew. But right. I thought that was just normal. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, yeah, I always yeah. thought that was normal. normal. Yeah. Right, right, right. But um, <laughs> yeah, that that is that is my 10 year plan. Like hoping, apart from the business side and all that, but right. this is purely the wildest dream. Because in the situation I am at now in 10 years, would I, would I have hard, worked hard enough to make that platform? So in that sense, with my personality, I'll be like, I got to make that platform now. I got to make that first brick stick to that wall right now for that 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's also like the Korean lifestyle too. It's the Korean culture too. Uh -huh. and, and other cultures, of course, but, but yeah, cause and I, I, of course, I hope to be successful. I, of course, because I, I, I study commerce, you know, mm -hmm. business law, marketing, economics, um, yeah, international business too, which is weird because I study. But yeah. <laughs> um, I, I want to say that was a cliche answer. Actually, I would say that was a very surprising answer. Oh. Yeah, dude. I, I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, really? Yeah, start a family and then be able to afford things. You know, people like, I don't think, you know, I, I let's not, let me not say I don't think, but I would say it's, uh, it's good to hear. You oh, know what I mean? Uh, Especially glad. if you come from humble backgrounds, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. just being able to afford to go to the doctor, the dentist, it really That's means great. something. You know what I mean? Yeah, you Preferred. know, like, yeah. you know, that can be so expensive. Right. So expensive. Yeah. With no insurance, you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what other, I guess, pro projects or upcoming events you got coming up? Well, with this whole crazy um, crisis with the COVID right mm -hmm. now, um, uh, I don't think there would be many events, but mm -hmm. for me right now, I wouldn't, I'm not even thinking about events. I I'm honestly, truly grateful that I could release an album at this time. Because, you know, the platforms have to sign off and allow my music to be on their sites. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I'm grateful for that for now. Um, and I will be for forever. But I want to be able to release full albums. I, I, I've, I've, I'm working on my, without a release date, without the assurance that I will be able to release it. But in my heart and mind, I'm already working on my, not my next full album. But the next full album, mm. and I already have subtracts for the one after that too. Gotcha. Oh, you got a <laughs> so, nice little library going on. 
I have a crazy library. I, I got some rare books in my library with some crazy uh, one song that I couldn't spoil, but I got an American artist and a, a very famous China Chinese artist in it, um, which I'm grateful for, which through relationships that it just came. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing how people got together but yeah and, and most of my songs are just alone anyway it's just me but it's like micro dot feature micro dot kind of thing but right, right, right. you know it's it's what i gotta do it's what i gotta get through and yeah release music um i don't know if i'll be able to do my youtube thing but i hope i can just upcoming events you, you just gotta check it on my i'm not appealing like go check out my channel but that's my personality. I have a lot of things I want to do in life. Hmm. And I work for that every single day. I don't show people it. I don't tell people it. But when it comes and they see it, you I appreciate that. Right. That, that. They go and see it. They go and listen to it. They hmm. go whatever it is, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, albums, definitely, as, a, as an artist. Uh, maybe some visual content depending on the situation and time. Right, right. Um, hopefully, make a family one day. That's a big event. <laughs> That's a huge event. <laughs> Yo, yeah. any lucky Work ladies out there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man, I, I'm a complicated person. <laughs> but yeah. You're a deep thinking person. Uh, yeah. But yeah, anyway, that, yeah, album. Um, hopefully some visual contents, um, things that can make people happy. With, yeah, and with the visual contents, I, I want to create some stuff, you know, in the future. If I if I get the chance and opportunity to do so, people that are working every day, if they have a 10 minute break, they could watch it. And then you know, they don't have to subscribe. They don't have to watch the whole thing. They don't have to click like. But for that five or 10 minutes, a few minutes when they're in the toilet, you know, they don't actually have to go to the toilet, but they go anyway because they want to get away. They mm. watch that video and they 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 get a sense of smile or freedom and enjoyment that gives them the fuel to make it through that day kind of thing, you know? Right. Yeah. I just want to bring good vibes. Yeah, and I, I wish I could. I wish I can one day again. Mm. I think your time will come soon, man. And all in time, right? Yeah, in, in time, I, I, I'm never gonna give up. Right. So, yeah. Well, I see the drive in you, man. Nah, I'm not gonna give up. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I guess just to like close things out, you know, it's honestly been an honor to have you as a guest. You know, call you my friend. It's been an honor to be on the show. To be honest, a few times during this interview, I wanted to ask you the same question, but I didn't. I have myself back because you probably would you know, cut that off the interview anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I feel like I know what you're about to ask. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, honestly, I don't know if everyone says this, but <laughs> I'm grateful to know you. And to be honest, I, I actually want people to know this. Um, during my hard time, Sam actually, you know, you gave me a lot of times you messaged me with uh, facts that is, that maybe I wanted or that I was scared to listen to, but you gave me hard facts, you know, that nail was there and you just banged on it. You know, it came right through my brain, straight to the heart. At times you, you cause, cause I was, I am struggling. Like, like you asked me like, if you need, if you need, you know, a budget for meals, just let, no, that thing, I couldn't accept that. Cause that's my possible, that's my personality, but you know, I just want to let people know that this dude right here behind Child's Play is an amazing soul. Like, you got to know that. And I don't think many people will be able to say that in interviews. Yeah, you know? I, don't, I don't take what you just said lightly. I, I yeah. really appreciate that. Definitely, I, I appreciate it. And that, those messages helped me get through many days, you know what I mean? And a few times I'll, I'll go back into the message and look at it and read it again just to reassure myself that I read that correctly and my heart feels warm and that it's the right reason to do so, things like that. 
And I hope this doesn't get cut out from the interview because this is the most important part of the interview in my perspective. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I feel like everyone's going to so, go to the yeah. end. Uh, uh, if they do, they hate it. Nah. <laughs> But man, um, yeah, man, I'm excited to see you smiling and striving yeah. and back in the limelight. First you know? time in a long time. Yeah, first time in a long time where you belong, you know. Yeah. And just for, I guess, for the viewers, you know, you can find Microdot at his Instagram at Microdot.official too. And go listen to his new album, Prayer, on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, you know, support him, support us. And, and also I put you know? it on my SoundCloud so people can listen to it for free too. Oh. And I think I did it downloadable. I don't know. I haven't used SoundCloud in such a long time, but I think mm -hmm. I did. Okay. But yeah. And my Microdot channel hopefully would be back in my hands by this. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. But Korean brother to Korean brother. Yeah, say I bought money back. Cool. Keep oh, yeah. Cool. Happy oh. Korean New Year, Lunar New Year. Huh. Every day. Every day, oh. bro. Thank you very much for taking your time. Yeah, you too, man. I appreciate your time. Hey, that, that was the line you were meant to say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but thank you. And thank you to the viewers. And if you if you feel some type of way towards me, I'm still grateful for it and I accept it and I understand it. If you if you feel like you anytime you can message me, negative, positive, you know, I, I'll, I'll read it. Um, I'll try to reply to it if I have the courage. Hopefully I will. Um, in honesty too. And everything I said in this interview is purely true, coming from clear memory. And yeah, um, I'm grateful for however you think of me. Mm -hmm. I'm not a crazy person, but yeah. Thank you very much for taking your time to listen to this. Appreciate you being on. Thank you. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon, yeah? All right, bro. Mm -hmm. The mission of Child's Play with Sam Kim is to bring on interviewees that are subject matter experts in different fields of work and careers to help our listeners understand the hard work it takes for one to become the best version of themselves. Our purpose is to bring stories that resonate with our viewers as we will talk about the interviewee's life, journeys, the ups and downs, and what's next. As you may know that Microdot recently was on our podcast and he has since on his YouTube channel official microdot uploaded a video discussing the scandal his family was involved in. I would love if our viewers would go to his YouTube channel named official microdot and have an open heart and a willingness to listen to his point of view. As you already know, we all live this life currently for the first time and we're all bound to make mistakes. And it's not about the mistakes that define a person, but how the person takes responsibility and pushes forward. So thanks again, everyone. I appreciate your time and effort and love you all.